At Option Genius, we believe that you deserve freedom, financial freedom, so that you have no more worries and more than enough money. Time freedom, so that you could do what you want, when you want to do it. And choice freedom, to live your life on your terms. But the system and Wall Street, are Wall Street are rigged against us little guys. So how do we fight back? Well, my friend, that's what this podcast is all about. My name is Alan Sama, and this is the Option Genius Podcast. Hi, yo, neighborino. This is Alan Sama, coming to you from the Option Genius Podcast. This episode is going to be more like part two of the Bitcoin you know, or maybe Bitcoin part one continued, whatever you, whatever it is. But in the last episode, what I did was I talked about how awesome Bitcoin is going, making everybody go crazy. And so there are people out there who want to take advantage of you. Shocking, right? And so they're using Bitcoin as the new way to do it. And so what I did was I outlined three different scams that people are using online to trick people into giving them money in the rules of getting rich with Bitcoin. If you are thinking about investing in Bitcoin, or if you've already done so, I thoroughly encourage you to listen to that episode. Maybe you can do it after this one. In this one, I'm going to basically show you really quick and easy how to invest and in Bitcoin if you want to buy Bitcoin, how I've done it, and what I consider a safe way to do it. So do this one first, maybe. Or maybe this one should have been episode one. <laughs> yeah, this one that makes more sense, right? This one could be how to trade in Bitcoin, and the other one would be you know how to avoid scams when trading in Bitcoin. That would be part two. But we did that one first. This one's gonna be part two. So you know, short. And, this one's gonna be part two. So you know, short and sweet. First of all, I think that uh, Bitcoin here is gonna be here for a while. You know, the technology is pretty cool. The way it works, it is most likely going to revolutionize banking just because of the way it is structured and so it is legitimate and I hopefully I hope that it does not collapse there are no guarantees yes it could collapse you know any day now one of the large governments maybe the EU or China or the US or somebody comes out bans Bitcoin or places some really crazy legislation on it that makes it super hard to transact then hopefully they, they use it in a way that uh, helps society, but you never know. Until that happens, I mean, there's always buts, but um, until that happens, the future looks really bright for Bitcoin because, you know, um, about a month or two ago, a firm in Japan announced that they were going to be starting to offer options trading on Bitcoin. The CME group announced last week that they are going to have a Bitcoin futures contract that can be traded and probably options on that contract as well, right? So that's why the price jumped up over to well over $7,500 coin. Um, since then, it has reached a little bit, but it'll probably continue to go higher. There was a fork coming up, another fork coming up, and um, I'll tell you what that is in a little bit. But, you know, more and more companies are accepting Bitcoin as payment, and I think that's, that's the one key that's going to make it really, really legitimate. If more and more, if it's easier to use, if the common person adopts it as a additional currency, you know, so you got cash, you got credit card, you don't have check anymore, nobody really takes checks, but you got cash, you got credit cards, and then you have Bitcoin. So that would really make it, uh, give it a firm foothold, uh, not only in the U.S. but all the way around the world. So I do th- the world. So I do think that um, you should buy some. I really do. You know, it's something new. It's something. It's kind of like a long-term call option. You know, you, you do it with some money that you can afford to lose. It wouldn't be, you know, a last-ditch effort and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to get into trading Bitcoin because it's so volatile. I mean, I don't think this is a trading type thing. This is a buy and hold type thing. Bitcoin itself. I'm not talking about other cryptocurrencies. I'm talking about Bitcoin. So for me, I am going to buy it. Well, I have bought some. And I bought, I bought some back in April 2000. I was somewhere around $2,500 or $2,200 a coin. So I bought a couple coins then. Um, then I bought some more when it was around five. And I just bought some more. I bought one more coin at seven, 7,000. And I'll probably be buying some more if it keeps going up. Um, and so I think, you know, 
it's it's going to be very careful uh, hard to trade this unless you are sitting there all day long in front of your screen trading it up and down just like you do in the stock market so there are plenty of opportunities if you're a day trader you can tra trade bitcoin it's pretty volatile um, but if you're a normal person <laughs> like us like me you know this is not a, a trading thing you buy it you hold it you know you don't think about it for at least another three years until 2020 i say that because 2020 is when they are expecting that there will be no more new bitcoin because right now they are still mining and uh, mining is another word for making so people who have computers can actually mine and make their own bitcoin can actually mine and make their own bitcoin so if you have in the past it used to be where you could do it from your own computer you know, if you had a, a computer in the basement <laughs> you can set it up to mine you some bitcoin um, but as more and more people get into it, it gets more and more difficult to mine. And so now you actually have to Bitcoin and it's just going to get harder and harder to mine until we get to that limit where, oh man, I forgot the number. I think it's 20 million coins can be made total. You can't have more coins than that. So once that, once that amount is reached, once the world gets to, you know, no more new Bitcoin, I think the price will explode from there because then you won't be able to make it. You can only just buy it. So I think the price will go up from there. But I think until 2020 is definitely when you should be holding these. I don't think you should be selling any of them until that date, at least, until they're done. And so, you know, that's what I'm planning to do. Um, and that's what I've told anybody that's asked. So the question is, you know, how do you do that? How do you get into Bitcoin? Well, if you're in the U.S., there is a company called Coinbase. C-O-I-N-B-A-S-E, Coinbase.com. They're probably one of the largest, if not the largest, Bitcoin brokers in the U.S. right now. If you go to their website, you can sign up right away. You can connect with your uh, bank account or even your credit card. And then, you know, you just tell them how much you want. They'll transfer the money. They'll buy the coin for you. And then um, when the money actually transfers, then they will put the coin in your account. They do charge a very hefty commission for that. So if you're just going to buy a little bit, you know, you're just going to do it. If you're just going to buy a little bit, you know, you're just going to do it once or, you know, then you're fine with Coinbase. If you're going to be doing a little bit more and the commissions are going to hurt you, then you need to go to GDAX, which is the letter G and then the letter D as in David, AX. Dot com. They are also owned by Coinbase, but it's kind of more like a software. Um, and so you can actually trade a little bit more easily and the commissions are a lot lower or even almost zero depending on what type of orders you use. So if you use like a limit order and you don't go in at the market, then you can get in at no commission because they're actually using you to make a market because there are no, no, no true like market makers like in the, in the stock exchanges. So what GDAX is doing is, you know, if you want to go in if, um, at the market and say, yeah, I just want the coin right now. I don't care what it is. Just give me the price at whatever's trading. They will charge you a commission. But if you go in and you open or if you leave and you're open, you, you might get filled. You might not get filled, but they will not charge you a commission because you're helping to um, make the whole ecosystem better by having more and more open orders. It helps Bitcoin itself and it, make, and it helps GDAX and it helps Coinbase. So that, that is a way to not pay any commissions on the trades that you're doing. Now, once you have the coin, you could leave it in your Coinbase account, or what you could do is you could put it into something called a wallet. Now, the risk with Bitcoin is that there is no protection, right? There's no FDIC. If your coin is stored with Coinbase or any other of these brokers, and that company happens to go out of business, well, then there goes your coins. There goes your money. It's gone. It's not recoverable. So what the experts are saying is that you need to have a wallet and you need to keep your coins in the wallet. Now, there is no, you know, there's no, phys there is no, you know, there's no physical coin and there's no physical wallet. Basically, all it is is a, a series of numbers and letters and a string of keys, really. And that is what your coin is and that's what your wallet is. So, you know, you save the code of your coin, you put it in a wallet. Now, Coinbase does have their wallet, so that's a little bit more secure than just having it in the Coinbase account. So you can put those in that wallet, or you could have your own wallet. You can you can get pretty sophisticated with it. You know, you could even have a computer that is not connected to the internet and have your keys 
saved on that computer. And so that way nobody can actually hack into your account, nobody can hack into your wallet and steal your coins um, because that's probably going to be the, the thing of the future where the hackers are going to go after the coins and try to break into these wallets. So that, you know, we're looking at something that's probably coming down the pike. It might be a little bit too hard, right? Other ways to make money, but eventually the hackers are going to start hacking into these wallets. And so we're going to have to come up with a way to keep them. For now, I think you're pretty safe if you have that Coinbase wallet. I have some in there as well. I haven't taken the next step. But there is something called a Trezor wallet, that's T-R-E-Z-O-R. That is pretty safe. That um, has a lot of pros for it, a couple of the cons, but it seems to be a pretty safe. I haven't used it, so I don't know, but from what I've seen, people have recommended that as a safe way to keep your coin. So there you have it. It's pretty simple. You go to Coinbase.com or GDAX, open an account, it's the same company. Deposit your money with your money with your credit card or your bank account and buy whatever coin you want and then you store it in a wallet and that's pretty much all you have to do. Like I said, I don't recommend buying and selling, buying and selling, trading in and out. Just hold on to it. Hopefully it'll go up. It has been going up so far. I don't know if the the, the percentage is gonna rise, is gonna keep going up because the more it goes, the harder it is to maintain that acceleration. But at least until twenty twenty I think it'll be a fun investment so to say you know something that's interesting something that you can talk about at cocktail parties and whatnot it'll be pretty cool you know i'm hoping that you know i can still it keeps going up i can keep adding to it and hopefully it'll pay for my college that'll be super cool if it could do that but there are other coins as well so bitcoin is not the only game in town although they are the mac daddy of all the coins they're the original they are the biggest one out there and all the other coins out there are attached in some way to Bitcoin. So, you know, if you want to buy any of these other coins, and there are thousands and thousands of these other cryptocurrencies as they're called, if you want to buy any of those, first what you have to do is buy Bitcoin, and then you have to transfer it into these other coins. That's how it works. So, you know, why would you want to take the other extra step? Unless there's a specific reason, you know, unless you're going to be trading, I don't think you even need to go into any of these other coins. But there are some other ones that I have bought and the two that I have are probably the two that are the most accepted behind Bitcoin and they are Light, the Litecoin and the Ethereum or Light, the Litecoin and the Ethereum coin, um, which is also called Ether. So if you hear somebody calling talking about Ether, they're talking about Ethereum. Both of these coins are all available on coinbase and i think that's one of the reasons why they are as big as they are because coinbase said you know these are good they're stable with them so you can buy both of these also on coinbase and both of them have gone up significantly this year in percentage several hundred percent um, they at, for the last couple months they've actually kind of stabilized and gone down a little bit so they're not jumping up as much as uh, coin has been doing and so that's why, you know, I made initial investments in those. I put about $1,000 in each one just to, you know, as another bet. But I haven't put any more money in because they haven't been going up. So if you want to, you can take a look at those. They're not really doing anything. Most of the action right now is happening in Bitcoin itself. And then if you want other Bitcoins that are out there, you know, you can find a lot of information on YouTube and Facebook. But all these coins, just be very, very careful don't buy something based on somebody's recommendation. Really, if you're going to go into this space, I would say you just stick with Bitcoin unless you're going to do a lot of homework, unless you're really going to understand how these coins work, how the blockchain works, what makes a coin valuable and not, you know, what coins are out there. If you're going to live in that and you're going to spend a few hours, you know, every week following on these things and, and staying on top of the news and whatnot, if you're doing that, then yeah, go into the other cryptos other cryptos but if you're not if you just want something that hey you know i don't want to be complicated about it i just want to put money in and make it go up just stick with the bitcoin stick with coinbase it's the easiest way to do it and so far it's been working so that is how i've been doing it like i said you know part of my investment has been up well from 2500 to 7500 to what is 7500 to what is that like a couple hundred percent so it's done really well. The other ones are not as, you know, they haven't gone up as well because I bought them later on, but um, I am overall very, very profitable on my investment so far. I hope I'll continue. If you want to, like I said, just do it like I've laid out in this episode. 
And then go ahead and also listen to the other episode where I talk about the three different scams that are out there. Because there are, even if you're just going to stay with Coinbase, you know, if you are going to be investing your money, the other three scams are very prevalent right now. And I don't think they apply only to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. They can and they are applied to other areas of finance as well. Penny stocks, options, stocks themselves, major stocks. And I think that you should listen to that one and open your eyes and see what's out there. And it's kind of like a really expose of the different industries. So attention to that one. Keep your eyes open, do your homework, and always trade with the odds in your favor. Want to know how to choose the perfect option trade for every trading situation? It's easy. Just download our free trading map and it'll tell you. Just go to optiongenius.com forward slash 